Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Man, good turnout. Thanks for not letting the, the snow and the slush and the wintry mix, as they were calling it, hold you back. Um, I hope all of you guys had a great winter break, filled with lots of holiday cheer, baby Yoda memes, lots of Christmas presents. Um, if you guys are new to CCF or you haven't been in a while, uh, welcome. We're super glad that you're here. My name is Nathaniel Kaufman. I'm one of the campus ministers here. And uh, what we're going to do tonight is, uh, is, is the same that we do every Thursday night, but minus all of the small group introductions. So uh, because of that, we usually have a little bit shorter of a sermon on our opening night. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of introduce the sermon series and uh, have a little bit of application um, uh, for you tonight that kind of goes along and introduces the series with that. So um, could, we, could we by chance get the, the graphic up for the, for the series? Um, but our series for this semester is called If You Love Me. And uh, where it comes from is John chapter 14 verse 15 where Jesus says, If you love me, you will follow my commandments. There we go, right there. If you love me, dot, dot, dot. The dots kind of make it seem ominous, but it's not. Um, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and it's um, kind of towards the beginning of one of his greatest discourses in the book of John. It's, it's his last major um, section of teaching before he goes to the cross and, and, and dies for our sins. And so he's talking to the disciples, and he's telling them a lot of really, really important things. Among those things is he, he's talking to them about the coming of the Holy Spirit. He's talking to them about the power of prayer and how they'll need to be in prayer. He's talking to them about how he will be praying for them. And then he's also talking to them about how they can continue to love him after he's gone. And what he says is, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. Now, if you guys have the YouVersion app, you can uh, jump in there. Uh, we're going to be going through a couple different uh, passages. And I have those passages on there to make it a little bit easier to, to follow along. Um, but this sermon series kind of comes from this main verse where Jesus says, if you love me, follow my commandments. Um, obviously, everything that Jesus says is, you know, super important. Uh, but this statement right here, I think, has a lot in it. It's simple, but it also has two kind of imperative things within the Christian life that are super important that we grasp. Um, the first is, is loving God, loving Jesus. And then the second is, is talking about kind of our ability to follow Jesus's commandments. And of course, right after this verse, he talks about sending the Holy Spirit, and we know that it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we are able to follow Jesus's commandments. But I thought that this, this uh, verse is, is really important, and it's also a topic that Jesus hit on um, throughout his ministry many, many times. You know, if you love me, then, then do what I say, essentially. If you love me, then, then follow my commandments. And so for our semester series, essentially what we're going to be doing is answering um, two kind of main questions. And the first one is, how do we know that we love Jesus? How do we know that we really love Jesus? And then the second one kind of follows after that, and it's, how do we make sure that we know that we are loving Jesus correctly? How many of you guys have ever taken some of those, like, personality tests? I know the Enneagram's really popular right now. Myers-Briggs. Shandy is, like, saying yes, yes, having an aneurysm. Um, or, or maybe you've taken the love languages test where it, you know, tells you, like, how you feel loved or how other people feel loved. And, and obviously none of them are the, the be-all, end-all of anything, but they can be really helpful. You know, if your friend is, like, you know, taking the test and you're like, oh, well, they really feel loved or valued through, you know, quality time or through um, gifts or whatever it is. And so um, luckily for us, um, Jesus is essentially telling us here, this is how you love me. The way that you love me is by following my commands. The way that you, that, that you show your love for me is by following my commands. And so what, what I want to do is I want to um, start out and I want to read a section uh, from Matthew chapter 7. If you guys want to go there, you can. It is in the U version. And it's a, um, it's a chapter that partially inspired this series that, um, where Jesus is giving lots and lots of different, um, almost rapid fire analogies. That, that, and he's teaching these, these lessons. And um, I, I think that our sermon series will be answering a lot of the questions that come out of this. And so Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? 
So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And that I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and a great was the fall of it. So uh, the reason I read this passage is because I think it addresses some of these questions that, that kind of go along with, with Jesus' statement. If you love me, then follow my commandments. And if we kind of walk through this passage of, of Matthew chapter 7 and kind of hit it at a very high overview level, um, we can kind of just analyze it really quickly, right? So, um, you know, first he's talking about entering the narrow gate, right? It's it, the, the narrow gate and the, the path is narrow and it's going to be tough, but we want to be on that path, right? As believers, we want to make sure that we're following on the path that leads to life. And then um, the, the next thing he says is, you know, not to be led away by false doctrine. You know, we don't want to be led away by false doctrine. We want to be believers who, who bear good fruit, but at the same time, we want to be believers who, who don't live our lives and, and then get to heaven and, and appeal to our good works. We don't want to be people that when we get to heaven, we say, but Jesus, didn't we do all of these things for you, right? And then Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. So we want, want to make sure that we're appealing to the good works that we've done. Instead, we want to be people who, like the wise man, hear God's word and act upon it. And so I think that this passage kind of brings up these, these questions. How do we make sure that we're following on the path of life, following, walking in the path of light? How do we make sure that we're really following Jesus' commands, right? We need to know his commands. We need to hear his word and, like the wise man, you know, build our lives around it. And so that's really what I, I feel like is kind of summed up in Jesus saying, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. And so for our sermon series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working our way through um, the book of 1 John in the first, uh, the first half of the semester. And uh, in 1 John, I, I love the book of 1 John, and, and, and what we're really going to find there is some beautiful and vivid but also simple imagery of, of light versus darkness. Um, and, and, and John is always talking about how we know that we're abiding in Christ and how we know that we're walking in the light and how we know that we're loving God. Uh, Christ. And so I think we're going to be answering and, and kind of addressing a lot of those really good, good questions there. And then the second half of the semester, we're going to be going through the book of James, kind of addressing that second part of, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Um, for those of you that like the book of James, you know that it's probably the most easily practiced book in the Bible, right? It's a super, super easy um, Adam is looking at me like, what? Okay, I guess I should say it's easy to understand what we should do when we're reading the book of James. Maybe not as, as easy to, to put it into practice, but it's really straightforward. There's a lot of direct things that we can do that we can say, you know what? I'm going to show my love for Jesus by doing exactly what I found in James chapter 4. And so we're going to kind of hit both of these books and, and work our way through this semester. And it is my hope that at the end of the semester, we'll have more certainty in, in knowing that we are walking on the path of light, that we're walking in the light and not in the darkness. And I think that, that we, I, my hope is that we will also have more certainty in not only knowing Jesus' commands, but that how to follow them, and that, that our love for Jesus would be coming out of us in just following his, his words and following his commandments through some very practical things that we'll find in the book of James. And so jumping back to kind of our theme verse here, I want to just kind of sit in that for the rest of our sermon and, uh, and, and unpack Jesus' statement just a little bit more. So John chapter 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And you may even get tired of me hearing me say that tonight, but, but that's our theme verse for the semester. 
Um, so I think the first thing that we have to do when we look at this verse is we, we kind of have to define love. What does it mean to love Jesus, right? And obviously the, the, the super obvious question is, or the super obvious answer is, is, is right there, okay? If you love Jesus, then you follow his commandments. But I want to go a little bit deeper, and I want to look at um, Jesus' definition um, for love. I want to look at Scripture's definition for love. And so some of the most famous verses that we have in, in our Christian culture are really, surra- are really kind of uh, uh, based on God's love for us. John 3.16 is one that many of you memorize. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so first we see God is defining love by acting it out. He's defining love by by self-sacrifice. And then God further defined his love for us. Uh, And and Paul talks about in Romans chapter 5, 8, he says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So not only do we know that God's love is self-sacrificial, but it's also given when we are totally undeserving of that love. So God initiates his love for us, and, and the order of this is, is important here. It's important for us as we, you know, as we talk about you know, the idea throughout this semester of loving Jesus by following his commands. Um, it's important that we have the order of this uh, uh, correct. It is God who initiated his love for us, and, and, and that's a good thing because there's nothing that we can do to earn God's love. There's nothing that we can do to earn our way to heaven, right? We can't work our way to heaven. There's nothing that we can do to earn God's love either because God has already shown us his love by sending his son to die for us on the cross. And so we don't want to fall into the trap of thinking that we can earn his love by what we do. Um, This is going to be a really practical semester where we talk about practical things that we can do to to follow Jesus' commandments out of our love for him. But we don't want to fall into the trap of thinking that we're earning love from God. Um, Because Romans 5.8, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We were wholly undeserving. There was nothing we could do, and Jesus still decided to die for us. And so God is the initiator of love. He has given us the ability through the gospel and through the power of his Holy Spirit to respond in love and, 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 and follow his commandments uh, out of our love for him. If you remember the passage in Matthew that we just read where the people said, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons and prophesy and do all of these crazy, crazy, miraculous things in your name? And Jesus says, I never knew you. The key thing to know there is that that these people got to heaven and essentially the idea is that God is saying, all right, you know, by what, you know, means can you make it in here to be with me in in, in perfection? And they're saying, well, you know, I did this and I did this and I did this. See, they're appealing to their own works. And we don't want to fall into that trap if this is going to be a practical semester. We don't want to fall into that category of, of getting to heaven and saying, well, God, I did all of these things. Because the only thing that gets us to heaven is appealing to the blood of Jesus Christ. His sacrifice on the cross is what pays the price for our sins. That's the only thing that gets us to heaven. And so we don't want to fall into that trap. And Jesus reminds his followers and reminds us today through his word that if we truly love him, we will follow his commands. And we'll follow his commands through self-sacrificial love. So if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Um, the statement really does have a lot of theological implications, right? And, you know, we kind of delve into that a little bit, and we'll probably delve into it a little bit more throughout the, the semester series. Uh, but one of the things I love about this verse is that it reminds me that Jesus wants me to love him and that Jesus wants me to follow his commandments. And because he wants that, he hasn't make it, made it super complicated for me to do that. Um, it reminds me that Jesus has provided a way for me to be able to follow him. He's provided the Holy Spirit to help me follow his commandments. He's provided me the ability to show my love for him. And it's not some super complicated process. It's not some crazy, you know, hoops that I have to jump through to do it, but that Jesus is keeping it simple because it is. And he wants us to be able to love him by following his commands. And so the statement is, is not hard to understand in, in that sense, right? And, and the other reason I love the statement is because we, we kind of understand it um, intuitively as well, right? If you love me, then you'll follow my commandments. It's, we kind of understand that by uh, even just observing the world around us. Um, some of you may uh, 
uh, may kind of relate with this, or maybe you have been in this situation, but um, I want you guys to think of, of a relationship. There's a guy and a girl, and I'm going to pick on the guy because I am a guy, and that's easier to do. Um, but there's a guy and a girl, and, and let's just say the guy is kind of manipulative. He's manipulative. He's kind of a deadbeat. Um, he doesn't really treat the girl very well. And uh, every time she's like, you know what, I've, I've had enough, he comes back and he says, no, I love you, I love you, I love you, I, I can't live without you. And he's crying, he's saying, I, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I've changed, right? And this happens over and over. And, and, you know, people from the outside, they're looking and they're saying, you know, I think you just need to get out of this relationship. You know, this is, this is not good. And she says, well, you know, he, he says that he loves me, right? How do we know that that's not true? How do we know that he doesn't really love her? His actions. His actions say otherwise, right? And I think that's kind of the heart of the matter here, is that when we truly love Jesus, we're going to be trying to follow his commands as best we can. Another way to, to think about it is, 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 you know, when you see a healthy marriage that really goes the distance. Um, <laughs> the more you think about a, a healthy marriage that is, is really truly healthy and, and goes the distance, stands the test of time, um, the more amazing it, it kind of really is. Because no matter how awesome the couple is or, or seems to be or, or, or looks from the outside, uh, neither one of them is deserving of the love that is given at, at really any point. But that love has to still be given, even though the, the husband isn't deserving at all times or the wife isn't deserving of it at all times. But for that marriage to stay together, they have to be committed to continue to love that person, even when it's an undeserved love. And so luckily for us, when we talk about loving God, um, in a sense, it's a little bit easier, right? Because God is always deserving of our love. He's always deserving of our self-sacrifice. He is always worthy of the affection and the honor and, 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 and the following that we give towards him. God is always worthy of that. So in a sense, it's a little bit easier. Um, but I think Jesus knew that we would find that loophole I think he knew that he was going to make people who would go to S&T and be engineers and try to find little loopholes and everything, and that we would think about that. Um, so Jesus kind of brings us back down a notch in Matthew chapter 22. Um, in Matthew chapter 22, it's verses 36 through 40, um, some teachers of the law come, and they're, and they're talking to Jesus, and you know, they're, they're kind of uh, trying, to, trying to maybe see if there's a hole that they can poke in him somehow, as they do. And uh, they say, teacher... Which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And we're thinking, okay, cool. Love God, keep his commandments. The first commandment is uh, love God. So love God, keep his commandments. First commandments, love God, check. Right? I think we're, we're doing pretty good. It's like a weird like circular thing there. But then he, he continues it a little bit more and he says, And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the law and the prophets. So to love Jesus by following his commandments means that we also have to love people who are completely undeserving of our love. In the same way that Christ died while we were still sinners and showed his love for us when we were in complete rebellion to him, in the same way we are called to love other people even when they are imperfect as we are. And so uh, Jesus knew we were going to find that loophole. He, he, he took care of it for us there. And kind of going back to the marriage illustration, um, it, it's, it's really kind of an incredible type of relationship to see flourish because essentially what you have going on here in a, in a healthy relationship is you have, you have two people saying, all right, I'm going to make a covenant with you. And, and, and what that covenant is going to be is that I'm saying, you know, at, with you as two imperfect people that no matter how you know, annoying you are or, or how imperfect you are, I'm going to love you. And 23 years from now, no matter how annoying and, and frustrating uh, you might be or these weird habits that you've developed that I am just like, where did that come from and whatever, I'm not going to give up on you. I'm going to continue to love you. And, and, it, and it's an amazing type of relationship. And, and, and when two people really stick it out together, like that. And, and that's the reason why God gave us the marriage relationship. It's to show his love for us. Because in the same way that in a healthy marriage, no matter how imperfect the people are, they don't give up on each other. Jesus doesn't give up on his bride, the church. Jesus doesn't give up on us. No matter how rebellious we were when he came to die for us, no matter how many times we, uh, you know, intentionally say, you know what, I know this is sin and I'm going to do it anyways. 
no matter how many times we mess up, Jesus is saying, no, I'm still going to love you because I made you this promise. I'm not going to give up on you. And this is how much Jesus loves us. And so uh, what I want to do in kind of conclusion is I want to look at, you know, Jesus's, one of Jesus's commandments. If you love me, you'll follow my commandments. I want to look at one of his commandments, and, and I want us to come away with one just really practical thing that we can do to follow Jesus's commandments out of our love for him. One thing that we can do tonight as we begin this semester series and as we begin this semester. Um, now, Jesus, he loved to summarize things, which is pretty awesome, but also kind of crazy that he did it at the same time. Um, in Matthew chapter 7, 12, Jesus says, So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So Jesus is saying here that do unto others as you would have them do unto you, summarizes all of this right here. That's a lot of the Bible, right? All of the law and the prophets. <laughs> have you guys read through all of that? And Jesus is saying, I'm going to summarize it one time with one rule. Do unto others as you, as you would have them do unto you. And so Jesus says, you know what? This summarizes the law and the prophets, all of the revelation that has come from God to man, everything that God wants from us is can be summed up in this. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, this is one of those verses that um, is quoted a lot. It's been quoted and requoted and, and written on plaques, and, and we even have a name for it. We call that verse, we call it the golden rule. And uh, part of the problem with verses that we almost know too well is that we know them so well that sometimes we forget to actually dwell on them and think, how should this verse really change my life? How, should, how can I actually take this verse that maybe I sang in a Sunday school song or something, or I memorized when I was at church camp, or you know, I've heard it quoted a hundred different times, but how do I really take this verse, and how do, I, how do I apply it to my life? How do I follow what Jesus is saying here? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's pretty simple, to be honest, but if you're not thinking about it, if you're not thinking how can I make this a part of my everyday life? It's probably not something that you're really going to be, be doing very often. And so this is, my, this is my idea. This is my application for you guys. This is my, my challenge for you. When we talk about loving Jesus and, and him saying, if you love me, then follow my commandments. And then we go to Jesus's number one commandment, and we're going to apply it this week and maybe this whole semester. But this is our application for, the, for, this, for this commandment. Whenever you catch yourself thinking to yourself, man, I wish that someone would just blank. I wish that someone else would just blank. Do this, do that. I really wish somebody would help me move, help me move into my dorm because it's literally an Arctic tundra outside. Or, you know, I really wish that somebody would just see that I'm struggling with this homework assignment and just, just give me some help. W whatever it is, anytime you catch yourself thinking that, stop pull out your phone, write in your journal, write a note, whatever it is that you do to remember things, and, and find a way to do that exact same thing for someone else in the next day, the next week, whenever that is. I can't think of really any better way to apply this. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. So the next time you think to yourself, man, I really wish somebody would notice that I'm, I'm having a rough time, I'm having a really rough semester, and I just need somebody to talk to. Well, Take out your note and put, put, put down, you know, I'm going to find somebody else that I think is maybe struggling, and I'm going to I'm try to be there for them. I'm going to try to help somebody else out because, you know, that's exactly what I would have wanted, you know, last month when I was moving into the dorm or whatever that is. And so find, this is, this is my application, it's my challenge for you guys is to, to find, find some way to, to implement this directly, to implement this in your everyday life. And, and one of the things that I, I hope is, is clear from this sermon series and, and is really sticks with us by the end of this semester is that, that following Jesus, that loving him and, and following his commandments is not just about not doing certain things. Following Jesus' commandments isn't just about our abstinence from, from certain things or certain you know, ideas or whatever. Um, our, our, our Christian culture has kind of built around us some... some debatably nice, but most of the time, good ways to where we avoid most of the things that we're just not supposed to do. 
But I think because of that, then we, we think that we're really on the right track. But we're forgetting to pursue righteousness. We're forgetting to pursue God's commands. We're pers- forgetting to pursue new and, and, and better ways to follow Jesus and to show our love for him and to express that love by loving other people around us. And so following Jesus' commands is not just about not sinning. It's also about our pursuit of righteousness. And so in closing, I'd, I'd want to invite you guys. Um, this, is, this is a sermon series that I've been I have been praying about a lot and has really been on my heart um, ever since we've kind of started developing it and, and, and gotten it ready. And I'm super excited for it, but, but my goal, and I want to invite you guys along with this, is my goal is to, at the end of this semester, is to love Jesus more fervently than I ever have before. And, and, and then secondarily, my goal is that, that my love for him would be coming out by following his commands, by pursuing righteousness, by knowing Jesus' commandments and following him the best that I can through the help of the Holy Spirit. And so I invite you guys with me on this journey as we study through 1 John and James. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you now, and, and God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that we can have confidence that um, Scripture is your word as, as you've said it, and that we can study it and know it. And God, we thank you that we can not just study your word, but that you've given us the gift of the Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to, to do righteous things and to follow you and to love you through following your commandments. And, and, and God, I just pray that this semester would be um, looked back upon uh, by, by everyone here as a semester of growth and a semester that, that is, is, is marked by love for you and that that love will produce a pursuit of righteousness and a pursuit of following you and your commandments. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.